the benefits of running a 100-year-old car company is that its archive is full of discontinued models. Some of them were forgettable, some were iconic, but one thing is for sure, the archive of discontinued cars is a gold mine. Ford has mastered the art of relaunching with the Ford Maverick and the Ford Bronco, and they haven't finished yet. Now, there may be plans to relaunch the Ford Ranchero. Join us today as we explore the Ford Ranchero and how this iconic model could see huge success just like the Maverick did. Before we explain the details, let's understand why the Ford Maverick is such a huge deal. In a world where pickups were continuously increasing in price and size, Ford came in and switched the script. They delivered the perfect pickup truck for everyday use at a price that's almost too good to be true. After a flurry of orders, they had to close down their sales pages and pause taking new orders because they were worried production wouldn't be able to keep up with demand. Ford made its intentions clear. The company would go all in on pickup trucks, but even they underestimated the demand for a cost-effective mid-size pickup. Enter the Ford Ranchero. The original Ranchero was released in 1957 as Ford merged the comfort and look of a car with the utility of a pickup truck. It was marketed under the slogan, more than a car, more than a truck, because of its dual purpose design. The origins of the model came about when an Australian lady wrote a letter to Ford requesting a vehicle to go to church in on Sunday and which can carry our pigs to market on Mondays. The model was incredibly popular as it was so unique and within two years, Chevrolet had launched the iconic El Camino as its direct competitor. The Ford Ranchero would use the same base as the Ford Escape, much like the Ford Maverick. If you're familiar with Ford's international lineup, you'll notice that the Ranchero also resembles the most recent Ford Focus. It's a popular hatchback, but no longer offered in the American market. It'll take the base structure of the Ford Escape, much like the Maverick, but have a smaller car-like cab, just like the Ford Focus. According to reports, the highly regarded Ford Courier truck will be replaced by the unibody Ford Ranchero. Ford currently has a winning formula, so we anticipate it'll be offered in a 2.5-liter hybrid engine producing 191 horsepower. And then they should offer the 2.0-liter EcoBoost turbocharged four-cylinder gasoline engine producing 250 horsepower. Front-wheel drive usually comes standard on all models, and all-wheel drive is offered as an optional upgrade with the EcoBoost engine. Ford's 2.5-liter hybrid engine performs very well, achieving highway mileage of 33 miles per gallon and city mileage of 42 miles per gallon. The Maverick, which has the same engine, does a combined gas mileage of 37 miles per gallon as per EPA U.S. Department of Energy testing. The Maverick can tow 4,000 pounds and carry up to 1,564 pounds in cargo. We anticipate that these numbers will be at least met by the Ranchero. With supply chain constraints and the price of raw materials skyrocketing, Ford has had to increase the price of the Ford F-150 by 17.5% on some trims just to remain profitable. When it comes to the Ranchero, it's anticipated to launch at roughly $20,000 and could take its place as the new cheapest Ford utility vehicle, as the 2023 Maverick, though it's not confirmed, is expected to increase in price by two to $3,000. But Jim Farley, the Ford CEO, is committed to lower prices. He's said on many occasions that Ford's mission is to lead a revolution and to offer electric and hybrid vehicles to the many and not the few. With a small body, two-door design, and no back seats, the Ford Ranchero will fit perfectly under the Ford Maverick as the most affordable Ford utility vehicle in their lineup. If the company can deliver a Ranchero at these prices, there's no doubt it'll experience the same success as the Maverick. We don't expect the same level of luxury as the current Escape, but you can expect a practical interior with plenty of space for the driver plus two passengers. An 8-inch touchscreen and fabric upholstery will both be included as standard along with Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and navigation. The Ranchero would be able to sit alongside the Maverick without heavy competition as the Maverick has five seats and the Ranchero doesn't. This is a big difference, putting this new model in a category of its own. Ford released the original Ranchero in 1957 and, as we mentioned, two years later Chevy launched the direct competitor, the El Camino. The El Camino was incredibly popular and went on to become much more iconic than the Ranchero because of one main difference. It was marketed as a muscle car that had a flatbed. It was a cool car to have and still is to this day. 
Chevrolet stopped production in 1988 and the El Camino became a sought-after car to add to a collector's fleet. Fast forward to the present date and the story might be rewritten for the modern age as reports are circling that Chevrolet is paying attention. Ford released the Maverick in 2021 to a sellout success and Chevy is now in the works to re-release the Chevy Montana, their version of a small-sized unibody pickup that is economical to own and affordable to purchase. It wouldn't be surprising to see a new version of the El Camino hit the streets if Ford can prove that there's enough demand for the unique Ford Ranchero design. Toyota is also paying close attention to Ford's recent home run launches. Bob Carter, executive vice president of sales for Toyota Motors North America commented, one of the spaces we're looking at that won't be short term is where the compact pickup truck is going. You have the Santa Cruz and Maverick on the market. Following up with, it could be a possibility and something we continue to look at. People often compare the Maverick and the Santa Cruz. However, we don't think they compare well for three main reasons. Even though the Santa Cruz has comparable dimensions to the Maverick, it's actually in a different price bracket. The Santa Cruz entry price is $24,440, almost $5,000 more. It's much more expensive. You can buy a brand new XLT Maverick for less than the base trim of the Santa Cruz. The second reason is Ford Maverick has much better fuel economy. As gas prices continue to increase, people need a car that's not only affordable to buy, but is economical to own as well. The Ford Maverick achieves an incredible 42 miles per gallon in the city and 33 miles per gallon on the highway. Its rival, the Santa Cruz, does just 21 miles per gallon in the city and 27 miles per gallon on the highway. The third reason is utility. The Santa Cruz just looks like it's more of a car than a pickup, and the Maverick looks like it's more of a pickup than a car. This is amplified in the bed size, with the Maverick bed being 4.5 feet long and 4.5 feet wide, all the way down the bed, making it useful for hauling material. The Santa Cruz is 4 feet long and 4.5 feet wide, but it narrows over the wheel wells to just 3.55 feet wide, so anybody comparing the two with pickup utility in mind would clearly opt for the Maverick. It's safe to say that the Ford Maverick and Hyundai Santa Cruz are just too different to be rivals. It's more likely that the Ford Ranchero and the Santa Cruz end up being closer competitors. Jim Farley is focused on pivoting Ford from being a company with its best years behind it to an exciting company with an exciting modern future. His vision is clear, to compete in areas where they have an advantage and to compete aggressively. With Jim Farley in charge, Ford has been able to develop and deliver products that its customers are genuinely excited about. They recognize that a truck is a way of life and the demand for an affordable version is long overdue. What do you think about the Ford Ranchero? Do you think it'll be as successful as the Maverick? Let us know in the comments. Thanks very much for watching today. We'd truly appreciate it if you'd leave a like and consider subscribing so you're always in the loop for the latest EV, Ford and tech news.